think we bombarded y'all with the doom and gloom of life, right? <laughs> like some of that stuff is depressing. I was sitting over there getting depressed. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so straight uh, I, 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 I actually wanted these because I looked. I was, I was in trouble over there. So let me ask you this, straight up, straight up. How many millionaires do you know? I mean, just I don't mean personally. Just just get, name name somebody you know is a millionaire. Beyonce. Beyonce. Beyonce is a millionaire. Bill, no. Kim Kardashian. She's Bill. probably a billionaire. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson is a millionaire. Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson. The Kardashian. Bill Gates, Bill, Bill oh, Gates, okay. Bill Gates. The Kardashian. Bill Gates is not big. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but listen, this, this is the thing. This is what I want you to understand. This is what I want you to understand. All right? The overwhelming majority of those people who you chose, who you picked, they became a millionaire in different industries. Right? They became a millionaire. But what you need to understand is that they are the 1% of the 1% of the one percent that actually become millionaires in that industry, like very, very few people in music, in sports, <laughs> in entertainment, become millionaires. Very, very few. But do you know something? Over ninety percent, over ninety percent of millionaires in America became so because of real estate. Which that levels the playing field. So we was talking to you just basically on surviving, right? But I'm gonna talk to you about thriving. You know what I'm saying? We was talking to you about how to how to how to get back, how to you know make it, how to ball on a budget, but I'm gonna show you how to ball. Yeah. Alright? So that's 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 the bottom line. So I want, I wanna make sure that each and every by the time we leave, I wanna give you enough game to where if you don't become a millionaire by the time you're 35 or 40, after the information I gave you, it's gonna be your fault. So you better pay attention because I'm gonna break it down. Alright? So this this is the reason why most people struggle. This is the reason why most people don't become millionaire. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. This is a quick story from my favorite book, two, one of my favorite stories in my favorite book. All right, so there's two brothers. One of them's name is Jacob. He's a younger brother. One of them's name is Esau. He's an older brother. All right, and so they, they grew up in a very wealthy family. All right, uh, dad had a lot of money, balling. All right, but Esau was Esau was a hunter. He liked to go out, and that was his hobby. He would, he would go out and hunt all the time. Jacob was more of a hands-on guy. He worked with his hands, did things. Kind of he stayed around, stayed around the family, stayed around the neighborhood. That's kind of what he did, right? So one particular time, Jacob goes, I mean, Esau goes off to hunt. Esau's gone a long time and don't catch nothing, don't kill nothing. Now, on his way back, Jacob realizes Esau's coming, so Jacob whips up some food. Now, in this, in this, in this area, in this time, the culture was the oldest child got the inheritance. He got the birthright. He got the one who was in charge of the family once dad died. So it was that that was a coveted position. Like everybody wanted to be the oldest child. Right? Because the oldest child got everything. But Jacob was the younger child, so he wasn't going to get that. So he was whipping up this stew, this soup. It was, this was Esau's favorite soup. So Esau comes back from hunting. He's hungry. He ain't eight in days. And now keep in mind, his dad's balling. He owns all of this stuff, right? All, this, all, all, the, all the houses, all the neighborhood, everything. But he gets there, and Jacob's like, yo, I got some stew. You're hungry. Esau's like, yes, give me some of the stew. I'm hungry. I need that right now. Right? Jacob says, cool, sell me your birthright. Mm -hmm. And he said, wait, what? He said, yeah, I want to be firstborn child. Exchange with me, and then you can have this food. And Esau says, look, I don't care about the birthright at this point. I'm so hungry. Look, I'm going to starve. I just, want to, I just want to eat. So he agrees and trades places with Jacob. <laughs> See, this is the issue that everybody deals with. This, this is what separates people who become millionaires from people who stay broke. Because what happens is we are willing to trade our entire future for a present situation. Mm -hmm. That's a word. That is exactly what's happening with all of the people that you know. We have so many people who are living in the household, who are, who are seeing situations in their life, and instead of planning for what's next, they're worrying about what's right now. And so what we was giving you was the beans and all that stuff, but this beans was giving you game. Like it was, it was a game and it was fun. But if you focus on what's important, like what's coming next, then eventually you don't have to worry about that. Right? So what you what you probably don't realize is that when you was coming up, there was teaching you, there was teaching you game. Like everything that you learned up until like the fifth and sixth grade on basic math, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, you learn that, that's that's a principle. Right? A principle is something that will work no matter in what field it's in. It's a principle. Right? So anything that you add to becomes more of. Anything you subtract to becomes less of. That's a principle. 
right? And you heard that, and you're just like, oh, okay, I'm just trying to do two plus two so I can get past this class. But in, in reality, that was teaching you how to be wealthy. Because what wealth is, is just simple addition and multiplication and staying away from subtraction and division. That's, that's what it means to be wealthy. Let me, let me explain it to you this way. The reason why we say that real estate is how 90% of Americans uh, become millionaires is because when I buy a house, I, I buy the house, and every time I make a payment on the house, the house that I pay for, I owe less on the house. Right? Y'all follow me? I bought a house. Let's just, let's just use simple numbers for a second. The house cost me $100,000. You're not going to get a very nice house for $100,000, <laughs> but I'm just using it as an example. The house was $100,000. Every time I make a payment on that house, the, the amount of money that I owe on the house goes down. But watch this. Every single year, if the house exists, the value of the house goes up. So now, every year, I'm creating something called equity. Equity means the difference between how much I owe on the house and how much is worth. Now watch this. If I'm renting somewhere, every time I make a payment to the landlord, I am paying his mortgage. Mm -hmm. I am paying for his house that you are borrowing. Mm -hmm. So you are helping him pay off his mortgage. So you are making him wealthy, not yourself. Every time you pay rent, the rent that you are paying is going to your landlord, and he is becoming more and more wealthy. Because the amount of money he owes on the house is going down, and the amount of money the house is worth is going up. So now he's got equity. This is how you build wealth. So instead of you going out and renting, what if you took your time, saved your money, and instead of focusing on things that you want to enjoy right now, think about what kind of life you want to have in 5, 10 years. My man over here was talking about balling because he was like, yo, this ain't enough beans for me. And I'm like, I, I feel you. It's not enough beans for me either, bro. <laughs> But what I had to do, there was a time in my life where I didn't have enough beans. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I sat back and I said, you know what? A lot of these things are not as important as I make them out to be. A lot of these things I'm just buying so the, the people at the stop sign can see me at the see me in the car. These people I ain't gonna never meet. They just see me with my rims on, they're like, oh man, he, he doing his thing. I ain't gonna never meet the people. Like, so what? But at the end of the day, we got to get to a, we got to get to a point where we prioritize. All right. So now we we building wealth because when we when we focus on buying a house, right? So one of the things I'm doing with my daughter, she's turning 20 this year, and so we've been focusing on getting her to a point to where she can buy her first house. And Rob, things have changed. You can buy a house at 18 now, mm -hmm. right? If you've established yourself. And so what we're doing, we focus on. So the first house she's going to buy, watch this, is going to be a duplex. You know what a duplex is? A duplex is a house that is, it's almost like an apartment. So it's a house and it has two sides. You have two families living in it, right? One side is one and one side is the other. She's gonna buy one, she's gonna live on one side and she's gonna rent out the other side. So she's gonna live on the side and the person on the other side is gonna be paying the mortgage because she's gonna charge them what it cost her to live there. Mm -hmm. That is how you establish wealth. And you know what's gonna happen when she goes to see Heather to buy another house? Heather's going to look at the fact that she's making enough money because of the house. She's making enough money to where that it's not costing her anything. So she can buy another house because the income she's making from her job is going to, co is going to cover the purchase of a new home because this one is already being covered by a renter. And so a lot of us, we live in rental properties forever, throwing money away, just throwing money away every single month. And there's nothing wrong with doing it for a season. But the goal is to get to a point where I'm building my own wealth, not just the landlord. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? All right, so I think, I think y'all kind of got that concept, right? All right, so I'm, I'm going to say this to you. Last thing, and then I'm going to shut it down. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, there's, a, there's a really old story that you probably learned when you was a kid. And it was Three Little Pigs. Y'all remember that story? Some of y'all looking at me like, I ain't never heard that. <laughs> three little pigs. So the three little pigs, they 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 had a, one built a house made of straw, and and you know the wolf showed up and blew the house down. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Then the next guy, next pig, he said uh, he built a house made of sticks. The wolf showed up and blew the house down. Then the next one made a house made of bricks, <coughs> and the wolf showed up and huffed and puffed and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. See, this is the and it's a representation really of the three types of ways you can be in a house, right? So the first way is the straw way, what I call what I call government assistance. This is, this is designed 
This is like when uh, when the government pays some of your rent, right? You rent the place, the government helps you pay some of your rent, right? This is designed in order to be a stepping stone so you can get to a point where you can build and get to the next phase in life. But what happens is most people, because the government is paying some of the assistance, they stay right there. And now they have generations of people all in the same household and nobody's building wealth. Nobody's building wealth. Nobody has insurance. Nobody has life insurance. Nobody's doing anything to change things for the next generation. This is the straw house. The straw house is because life happens. The wolf will show up. And eventually when the wolf show up, everything that you think you have, you'll find out that you don't have any substance. You don't have anything because you don't have no savings. You don't have anything to, to, to deal with what's coming next. All right, then the next set of people is the people who build a house out of sticks. This is the people who rent. You're renting, but you're not establishing yourself. You're renting, but you're not building nothing for your children. You're renting, you're doing okay, but you got nothing set aside for them. All right? But the person who is the one with the bricks, that's the person who went out, did what they had to do, focused, and built the discipline that it takes in order to buy a house. Because that discipline is going to save me. Because eventually, if I can buy one house, I can buy two. If I can buy two, I can buy four. If I can buy four, I can buy eight. I can buy eight houses. And so it's really just a matter of me disciplining myself. And if I do those things, bro, you balling. That's what balling looks like. That's, and that, that's, real, that's real balling. Balling is getting to a point where I no longer have to work for my money. My money comes from the mailbox. I don't have to trade hours for dollars no more. And what I'm giving you right now is game. And there's a lot of colleges and other institutions where people don't look like us. And they get these conversations every day. And we're not getting it. But it's a, level, it's a level playing field. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. It don't matter where you start. You can do it. It don't matter. It don't matter whether or not the folks have money. It don't even matter how much money you make, because all of it is, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you spend. So you just gotta, you gotta lock it down, you gotta focus, and then you can be balling like a man said, you want all the baby. That's it, all right? All right, I'm gonna have to